Hello everyone, this is Dr. Aravind Rajanayagara, an associate professor at the uh, Department of Aeronautical Engineering. Until now, we have been talking about aircraft systems. Okay, Last time, we were actually seeing about what were the airframe subsystems or airframe systems. So, airframe systems actually have three different subsystems, which is uh, nothing but wings, fuselage and empennage. And I told in, this, uh, in the topic that I will not be going in-depth description or uh, giving in-depth description of these three subsystems because it is actually in the scope of airframe structural design. So we have just seen that the wings are where you have uh, many interconnected systems like uh, fuel systems, propulsion systems and the other uh, subsystems which pass through the wings. Okay, So you have the fuel tanks which are almost active on uh, wings of a civil commercial aircraft, even in fighter aircrafts. And uh, fuselage is where you have all the electronics, avionics, uh, I mean avionics, hydraulic subsystems, fuel systems, and uh, uh, environmental control systems, everything which pass through the fuselage. And also in the empennage, you actually have got uh, an auxiliary power unit and also the control systems. So, uh, when a designer who is designing the airframe subsystems should actually take all in consideration where will be the position of my fuel tanks. Where, where, where should I give more strengthening with respect to the bending loads that I will be having. So that is actually a scope of, in the scope of airframe structural design. So today we will be seeing the second physical subsystem which is nothing but vehicle systems. In vehicle systems, you have flight controls, propulsions, fuel systems and hydraulic systems. I have blacked out the others so uh, since we have been continuing the same topic for the past two, two lectures. Okay, first let us see what is flight control. Okay? Flight control is actually we have three uh, two flight controls which are primary and secondary. So as you can see on the top right, there is an animated image which is being played right now. That is, uh, you have the primary flight controls. From primary flight controls, those are the control surfaces which control the roll moment, the pitch up, pitch down moment, and the yaw moment. Okay, so the roll moment are controlled by ailerons when <coughs> the pull up stick is pulled towards the left or the towards the right of a pilot or the first officer, it actually rolls the aircraft in the opposite direction. So you can also see a small aircraft image which shows how the aircraft uh, reacts when we uh, apply these control systems. Okay, These control systems are called primary control systems without which we, the aircraft will have difficulties to fly or to di direct itself to the destination or in, con in, in case of combat aircrafts, it will, uh, it will have some issues. But whereas we also have some kind of other control which is known as secondary flight control where you have high lift controls, flap arounds and slats and speed brakes. I will be giving an example. For example, uh, here on the bottom left corner you have the flap arounds which is nothing but uh, it is an example of Boeing 777. The flap arounds that you are seeing here is of Boeing 777. Okay? A flap around is nothing but a control surface which is basically a flap but it also has uh, the use of ailerons or it also uh, has the same control such as ailerons. So that means the flap around is a flap which is used to control the roll moment of an aircraft. And when you come to the speed brakes, you have the second uh, middle, in the, the image in the middle, where you have spoilers, which is known as generally spoilers or speed brakes. I think people who have already flown and had a chance to sit by the window over the wing have already noticed this. During the time of landing, you have these uh, <coughs> these uh, control surfaces known as spoilers which lift up. That means the pilot operates it to slow down the aircraft. And there is another there is another method to slow down the aircraft which is the reverse thrust. That means reverse thrust right nowadays is not being used a lot but we have uh, spoilers which is used in almost every modern aircraft like Boeing uh, 777 or Boeing 787 or you also have it on the Airbus A320s and Airbus other series. So here <coughs> What happens is when the speed brakes or the spoilers are lifted up at a certain angle of attack or a certain uh, <coughs> opening angle, it separates the flight. I mean, it creates uh, additional drag. It creates additional drag which slows down the aircraft. And on the bottom right corner, you have the image which is nothing but uh, high lift control surfaces where you have. Both are extended. That means you have the leading edge slots and the uh, trailing edge slots, which are extended 
they nothing but uh, they are almost used in both takeoff and landing uh, operations or uh, of the mission control or uh, sorry mission of the aircraft and what happens is they actually increase the camber of the airfoil when they increase the camber of an airfoil they produce additional lift and this load on the aircraft uh, sorry they produce additional lift so these are the secondary control surfaces which are actually used in uh, civil aircrafts I have given an example of civil aircraft since we have been dealing with civil and commercial aircrafts from the past day. Okay, when you proceed further, how are these control surfaces controlled? Let us consider uh, an Airbus A320. Airbus A320, as I said in the last class, if you have taken any uh, Air Indigo, Go Air, or even Vistara Airlines from uh, uh, local in, in, in India, domestic flights in India, which is, there is a chance of 95% that you have bought an Airbus flight. Or uh, other than if you have taken Indigo with turboprops or even Vistara with turboprops, Truejet, <coughs> most of the other aircrafts are actually Airbus A320s. That is in the in the scene of Indian commercial aviation. Okay, so you have here what you have here is you have a, a picture of all the control surfaces that are existing on an aircraft today. So you have the yaw control which is controlled by the rudder over here on the uh, vertical tail plane, and you have the elevator which controls the pitching moment, and you also have the ailerons which control the row moment. These are primary control surfaces and you have the secondary control surfaces such as slots, flaps and lift dumpers or roll spoilers. The roll spoilers are nothing but the speed brakes. So uh, I'll, I'll not be going into depth about uh, how these flight control systems or the different vari variations or different methods that these flight control systems are being actuated because it itself apart is a topic or is a chapter. So I'll be just brushing through the uh, <coughs> surface and also I'll be explaining what is uh, which is the type of control method that we are using in commercial aviation today or in modern aircrafts. So coming to that, the modern modern aircraft such as Boeing 777 or uh, Boeing A320 Neo and everything else since 1990s uh, or the dawn of 1990s from the dawn of 1990s have seen a new control system which is known as fly-by-wire. So this fly-by-wire actually has three different modes. First thing is fly by wire, second thing is direct electrical link, and third, third is mechanical reversion control. So, a reversion control through mechanical mode. What you can see is that is what you, you don't get perplexed that what is this mechanical control and reversion mode and at all. They are just, this is nothing but uh, a redundant system. Okay, fly by wire is the main mode of operation that these flight control systems are actually being used. So fly by wire is nothing but it has a set of analog uh, algorithms, sorry, not analogs, set of algorithms that has been defined during the design process according to the mission profile of an aircraft, which are actually uh, when a pilot gives a command, the command is given as an input to the <coughs> fly by wire uh, control system. That is nothing but the actual, uh, sorry, uh, fly by wire algorithms, which passes, which crunches these input data and gives an output to the actuator control electronics board which is nothing but kind of a motherboard that you see in your system. These actuator control electronics actually send a signal to the servo wall, which gives the hydraulic fluid to the uh, <coughs> to the piston, which moves the control surface. For example, if I need to move my aileron, which is presented like this, when I give an uh, or elevator, if I give a pitch up moment, this these actually it will go this way. And if I give a pitch down moment, this will go this way. So this is how fly by wire works. In case there are some issues with the fiber wire system and there is uh, the pilot is unable, the system is not, not respons unresponsive, what happens is it, it actually switches to direct electrical control. Direct electrical control is simple. I mean, it is almost like fiber wire, but it doesn't have any algorithms. The pilot gives an input, the electronic the data is read in terms of electronics and uh, <coughs> which is sent to as an output to the actuator control system and the same thing happens. When both of these systems do not work, we go to the age-old method, the mechanical control, which is a system of push-pull rod system or a pulley cable system, or even a, which a mechanical system, which a system of gears or links, which operate the LBDT, that means the uh, actuator, and to control the aircraft. Do you get me? And all of this is actually given as a feedback to the pilot. So the pitch up angle, if I want a five, five degree of angle to pitch up, I need to know that the aircraft has, has actually pitched up to an angle of five degrees. So that is given as a feedback. Next system is actually propulsion system. 
and uh, what is uh, propulsion is nothing but it is an act of propelling that means to move forward here you can see that there is a group of images don't get confused the first thing on the bottom left is the age old system the first system that were used in the period of world war 1 and world war 2 so here you have reciprocating engines the first one is actually a v engine which is being used v engines are common it are it has been used in uh, vehicles like audi or even mustangs or i mean any muscle cars still have v do they have got v, v engines not yet uh, on, on Indian uh, brands, but uh, foreign brands where you go to some luxury cars like Volvo or even uh, Audi, Audi for sure, or BMW, they have V engines. So that is a V engine where you have the pistons which move up and down, they move the crankshaft. Crankshaft, in fact, rotates this shaft which rotates the propeller. The second kind of system is known as radial engines. Where radial engines, as you can see, you have a number of piston one, two, three, four, five. Uh, systems which are arranged around the crankshaft when the pistons move up and down the crankshaft is rotating when the crank crankshaft rotates it actually rotates the uh, gearbox shaft which in turn rotates the propeller this is how this one was actually being used uh, v engines were used in first uh, variations of p51 mustangs in the world war 2 or even spitfires radial engines were actually added after v engines to reduce the vibration and to uh, increase uh, to increase more weapon space so radial engines and the third kind of engine was actually developed by a french scientist which are known as uh, uh, rotating engines where you have the crankshaft is actually fixed to the airframe in the other cases the pistons or the engine casing in these two cases pistons or the engine casings are fixed to the airframe but here in the third engine reciprocating engine the crankshaft is fixed to the engine case and the pistons move up and down which actually propels the propeller we, are, we don't want to get into details because it is a subject known as aircraft propulsion this is just history as of today we are all using gas turbine engines a common part for the gas turbine is where you see here is the gas generator the gas generator consists of compressor which is axial compressor and you have a combustion chamber where the propellant mixture propellant air mixture is actually burnt and then the turbine the turbine is uh, you have high pressure and low pressure any variation of engines that we use today like turbo props turbo fan turbo jet with afterburners or turbo jet or even uh, <coughs> turbo shaft engines all contain this gas generator which is common for all so, uh, in the next uh, slide, what we can see is we can see the different variations of the gas generator. So, uh, as you can see, you have gas generator here, gas generator here, and also the gas generator here. The only difference is what is in front and what lies behind. So, a turbojet engine is a simple engine where you have the gas generator, and by adding an inlet and a nozzle, you get a turbojet engine. Whereas, if you see turboprop engines, turboprop engines are actually they have high pressure compressor HPC and uh, sorry low pressure compressor, high pressure compressor, combustion chamber, high pressure turbine, and low pressure turbine. All these, when the combustible gas actually he uh, turn the turbine, which in turn turns the compressor, and the compressor is actually connected to the propeller, uh, which is which is what propel which what propels the aircraft forward. In the case of turbofan engines the same thing same process is going on but the only thing is instead of having a propeller we have a fan so in this figure over here in this animated figure you can see how wh what works actually so first things we turn on the engines using a uh, auxiliary power unit uh, uh, which turns the shaft and once the uh, concerned pressure is reached in the combustion chamber over here you have the uh, air air propellant mixture which heats which is heated and ignited. This ignited mixture actually the work is done by the high pressure turbine which is at 6 and 7 and these 6 and 7 are connected to the high pressure compressor at level 4 and low pressure compressor at level 3 which in turns turns the or rotates the flan blades at level 2 which suck the air. So uh, please do make a note of this important engine because we are using this engine in our civil aviation. And we shall continue in our next class. What are the subsystems of propellant system? Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.